we haven't got any women yet. This is only because I have not included Queen Anne, because although she certainly had a very heated relationship with the Duchess of Marlborough, I'm sort of doubtful, like Marie Antoinette, constantly accused of lesbian love in the paper. So it was an issue in people's minds, but it doesn't look like it really happened to me. Or maybe I'll put her in in future versions. But we have got our first trans person. In fact, this is a really important trans person. When Havelock Ellis wrote about trans people, he called transvestitism, transsexualism, Ianism. Okay. So this is from the Chevalier d'Eon, or if I may give you his whole name. No, oh, this is not in the order I thought it was, is it? Charles Geneviève Louis Auguste André Timothy d'Eon de Beaumont. There you have a good name. Um, so uh, Dion was, uh, like so many of the people we've talked about, a bit of a military hero, uh, a spy, like Marlowe. He was a spy for Louis XV. He uh, worked in the embassy in London trying to arrange a French invasion of England. Uh, he was very popular in England. He imported vast quantities of wine from his estates. He was fed it all across London. Um, and then he had a falling out with the French crown. Uh, let me see if I, it's, it's a very complicated story. He had been at ambassadorial rank, but then a new ambassador was appointed and he was demoted beneath ambassadorial rank and he was not happy about this. And so he started an enormous letter writing campaign uh, protesting his treatment. And, um, but, but they couldn't recall him or do very much about him because he had in his possession all of Louis XV's letters about the invasion of England. So he was blackmailing the French crown, basically <laughs> what he was doing. Um, now, somewhere in this campaign of self-justification, the rumor started floating through London that Dion was a woman. Now, the rumor said, in, in its basic form, that he had been born a woman but had been dressed as a boy because his father needed male issue to inherit. Um, and this became a subject of enormous speculation. You should not think of people in the past as any less you know, gossip uh, addicted or ridiculous <laughs> than people are now. There was <laughs> the betting pools in London about Deon's sex were huge. There were millions of pounds were being bet on Deon's sex. Um, but the, the best thing we can see, it's, the interesting question for me always has been, how did this rumor start? I mean, it doesn't look like a woman. The best evidence is that he started the rumor himself. Um, and, and specifically, he started it in order to portray himself as a kind of modern Joan of Arc, who was also a girl dressed as a boy. Um, anyway, he's a bad uh, poster boy for trans people because, in fact, he didn't want to dress as a woman. He wanted it to be known that he was a woman to his glory. But he didn't particularly want to dress as a woman. He was eventually recalled to France by Louis XVI. And Louis XVI let him come back to France on condition that he dress as a woman. And in the style of the French crown, he gave him an enormous budget to buy women's clothes. <laughs> but Deon didn't cooperate. He kept striding about in his dragoon's uniform. And eventually, he received the privilege to continue to wear the Order of Saint Louis which was from his military medal, his main military medal. The story goes on from there. Uh, he then, uh, one of the great things, uh, you should never think that America was very off screen. Uh, he volunteered to fight in the American Revolution, <laughs> but was, was turned down for it. Uh, <laughs> they wanted him on his estates in women's clothing. Uh, one does have to ask what his mother thought about all this, who was on his estates with him. The whole story is very bizarre. Uh, in any case, then during the revolution, he fled to England, where he continued, however, to dress as a woman and supported himself as Lady Fencer. It's a kind of circus act. Uh, and he lived quite a, an advanced age, his 80s. He was eventually wounded. He, his health went down. He died. And it was revealed by the doctor who examined him that he had been born male. So it's, a, yeah, it's, a, it's a really an odd an odd tale, and he is one of the most prominent recent purchases of the National Portrait Gallery. So we go from Shakespeare to Deon. <laughs> That's perhaps what I should call the talk instead. <laughs>